So, some of you may be wondering, how the heck does Haruka, the ChatGPT companion, actually work under the hood? Well, it looks a little something like this. Now, I know this may seem a little bit complicated, and together it is. But actually, when you break his diagram down, what's going on is actually a relatively simple process. But let's go over it. So, to begin with, one of the most important aspects of this mod is context. One of the reasons Haruka can respond so intelligently is that we are feeding her context of what's going on in-game to Haruka. Now, Haruka doesn't necessarily see the game like you do through a monitor and visually. Instead, she sees it more from a programmatic standpoint. Pretty much all the command line events which are triggering underneath the hood. And all of these events, such as her current location, the date and time, any fights she gets in dialogue which happens around her, all get sent over to the simple AI gateway server and saved. Now there are two ways to trigger her to actually get a response. The first one is through events, such as you picking up a book, then it's in a combat encounter, and sometimes, just on a random time basis, she will make a random comment. Uh, the second and more important one is when you, the player, talk to her, whether through your microphone or voice, or through your chat box. Now, for this example, we're going to assume you, the player, has just talked to Herika using your microphone, saying, Hey, how are you? So this audio recording of you is sent on over to the simple AI gateway server, and really it is quite simple. It can either be ran on UW AMP or Drama Distro, pretty much two ways to host the web server, and it really has three main roles. The first one is a middleman to all these APIs, which really where a lot of the AI magic happens. The second one is it acts as Herica's memory. All of these context events get saved to a database. Now, one of the things we're still trying to work on is longer term memory. Right now, Herica kind of has a memory of a goldfish, but even with long-term memory, it functionally will work the same, where all of these events are saved into a database for her to retrieve later. And finally, we're using the simple AI gateway server to package up code responses to send to these APIs so we can actually get useful information out of them. Now you may be wondering, what the hell is an API? This word has been thrown around quite a bit, especially now with this new AI craze. Our APIs have been around for quite a long time. A lot of programs and websites use them. It's basically a way to connect to some sort of server or service. You send in one bit of code and then you get a response back. A good example of this is actually the ChatGPT interface. You see, all you care about as a user is typing in the box a uh, question to ChatGPT and then you just get an answer. You don't actually care about all the servers, services, the hardware, and all the fancy back-end technical stuff to get your answer. You just want the bloody answer. Also think of it kind of like a grocery store. You see, you as a consumer going into a grocery store don't exactly care too much about the massive logistical nightmare it goes into running a grocery store. You just want to walk down the aisle and pick up a packet of Oreos. Now the first API we need to use is a speech-to-text API. As this current audio file, which we recorded, is not exactly useful to us right now. And so we send this audio file to a speech-to-text API, or in this case it's either OpenAI or Azure currently, and then you will receive a text file translation of audio which has been said. Now that we have the text file of the player's question, we need to assemble a prompt. Now the prompt code we're sending over to the AI prompt API, which is ChatGPT, looks like this. Now, once again, this looks pretty complicated. It looks like some really crazy code. But this isn't any particular code. It's technically pseudo code. Essentially, we just need to package up a decent enough response to send over to what is essentially ChatGPT to get a good response out of it. And we can actually break down this piece of code into three sections, kind of like a burger. Oh, the top piece of the code essentially defines Haruka's personality and the rules for the roleplay. It basically just sets the entire tone for what the rest of the response will be. Our juicy middle is as many of the recent contacts events we can stick into this API call. 
More context means more accurate responses from Haruka, but does also increase the cost. We've kind of come to a middle ground of roughly 20 of the most recent events to send off to the AI. This also comes back around once again to trying to get better long-term memory for Haruka, but we're just trying to stuff as much useful context about what has recently or previously happened in the game so we can get a more accurate response. And then the final part, the bottom bun, is really just why we want Haruka to respond. Whether it's we want her to summarize a perk, to make a comment about a recent combat encounter, or in this question, the player has asked her a question, hey, how are you doing? And this entire package here is essentially prompt engineering, a fancy buzzword which has been thrown all over the internet now of the advent of AIs, but this is a legitimate skill which you're definitely going to be seeing more of, as this sort of coding is what's being used not just by our AI mod, but what will soon to be many other AI applications using these language learning models, or learning language models, to get useful responses and information out of them. And so we send a prompt code burger over to OpenAI to generate a human response. Now people have asked whether we can use offline versions of learning language models to circumvent the price as well as the censorship which is unfortunately happening with OpenAI. The answer frankly right now is just no. The hardware requirements is pretty astronomical to get this working and currently a lot of these offline learning language models just aren't as good and are slower compared to ChatGPT. So ChatGPT it is. And the cool thing is, is that this crazy looking pseudocode prompt burger, when sent over to ChatGPT, will get you a simple English looking response. You know, it also does work with other languages, we have done some testing with that. You can also just copy paste this prompt code burger over into the ChatGPT website and most of the time you will also get just a standard English human response. Now stick with me as we are almost done here. So we got Haruka's text response, now we want her to actually speak it. And so we simply send this text response over to a text-to-speech API. Pretty self-explanatory, we get the text, we convert it into speech. There's many different text-to-speech APIs and services we could use with different varying qualities and varying prices. But there's really a whole lot of voices one can use. At any rate, we eventually get our audio version of Terrica's response. And now of the text response and audio response, our final job is now to send us back into the game. The text file will be sent back into Skyrim and play as subtitles. Well, the audio response technically doesn't play in Skyrim. It actually plays on your Windows operating system sound settings. It's just a Skyrim limitation of not being able to very easily uh, bring in audio files back into the game. But through that entire process, we've managed to get a response from Haruka. And this entire crazy process usually only takes anywhere from 5 to 10 seconds. The speed is usually dependent on your home internet latency and just how much usage the API servers are currently undergoing. And that's basically how the mod works, apart from one feature, and that is actions and commands, which gets a little bit complicated. To really break it down, essentially as an AI narrator, which then decides from Haruka's response, where that response triggers some sort of script in game to run. We send a list of functions, and these functions are different commands which can run in game, and depending on the narrator decides if one of them are worthy to be played in game, it then decides to run it in game. However, if one of these responses are, for example, attacking an enemy, we need to trigger another response from Skyrim to send a list to our AI server of the current entities around, see if they match the actual response of what enemy we want Haruka to attack, and then package it all together to go back into Skyrim and then see attacks the enemy. Pretty straightforward. And that's pretty much it. There's quite a lot of moving parts in regards to this mod, which does lead to a lot of potential issues if you misconfigure any of these parts. We are looking to make the installation process better. Trust me, that's one of our main priorities with this mod. But at the end of the day, it just works.